Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a USB bass flashback using a little USB stick on the ASRock B650M Pro RS. Now, I will say straight away, if you're planning on doing one of these bass flashes, there's a few things that you're definitely going to need, but the first thing is to make sure you've actually got the right motherboard and the right bass file. So there's a lot of different versions of this. There's the Wi-Fi version, the non-Wi-Fi version. There's also an ATX version, and this is the Micro ATX. That has got the designation of the M, so B650M for Micro ATX, or the standard B650, which is the ATX version. Now the BIOSes are going to be pretty similar anyway, but they're not intercompatible, so make sure you get the right one for the right board, because there are some subtle differences. If for any reason you're unsure or a little bit hesitant, not too sure what you actually need to do, then you can go over to our Discord, completely free to join, and there's loads of helpful people on there which will try and point you in the right direction. You may need to take a picture of your motherboard, that kind of thing, just so we can clarify what board you've actually got. But otherwise, it's a relatively straightforward task. There are going to be some things you're definitely going to need, uh, such as a USB stick, less than 32 gigabytes ideally, so you can format it in the FAT32 file system. If you've got a drive which is larger, you can actually create a smaller FAT32 partition on the drive. We've done a separate video on that. I'll try and link that in the video description so you can check that out also. Other things you need, power supply, and also you need a 24-pin power connector to attach to your motherboard. Something else which is worth bearing in mind as well is actually knowing which BOSS version is on your board. ASRock make this really super simple. If you take a look at the motherboard itself and locate your BOSS chip, which is just here next to the chipset, you can see on there, it clearly says 1.21. So that is BIOS version 1.21. So you can tell from that which BIOS is actually on the board from the factory, if it's brand new, and then you can tell if you need to update it. Now certainly with AM5 and the kind of instability and issues with memory, etc., I would really recommend going for the very latest BIOS, which hopefully should have ironed out a lot of problems. And obviously, depending when you're watching this, the BIOS versions may be considerably newer. So I would always recommend going for the newest one. If it's a beta BIOS, then potentially is a little bit of hesitancy. Take a look at the dates and see which one works out best for you. But we'll take a look at that when we go over to the computer shortly. So other things you're going to need is obviously like a stable platform to do this on. A lot of people are going to ask, do I need to do this on a bare board? Can I do it on a fully built system? That kind of thing. Yes, you can. You can do either. For me personally, I would like to do this on a brand spanking new board straight out of the box just to make sure it's got the latest boss and also to rule out any other things interrupting the boss flashback process. Maybe you've got your reset button connected to the wrong part on the board, so when you try and do the flashback, it just won't do it. There's lots of things which can interrupt the flow, so ideally, a bare board is the way to go for me. If you've got a fully built system, I would suggest probably the best things to do, if you can, just remove a few things. Uh, ideally, just remove the RAM. That will try and prevent it from booting anyway, but otherwise, kind of yeah, go with whichever works for you. So with all that intro out of the way, let's go over to the computer and we'll actually see how we can format the USB stick, how to download the driver, how to extract it, then how to put it back on the USB drive ready for flashing. Okay, so we're on our Windows 11 desktop here. So I'm just going to insert my USB flash drive into the computer. And you can see at the moment, this drive is completely blank. That is awesome. If you're not entirely sure and you want to get the right format on it, open up my computer. Right click on your USB drive, obviously make sure you get the right one, and you can go down and choose format. Make sure that this is in the FAT32, and also the allocation size you can set to default. If there's anything in the volume label, I always recommend removing that, the choice is yours, but make sure it's under 32 gigs, if not you'll have to create a smaller partition, as we mentioned earlier, the video for that will be linked in the video description. So when you're happy, click on start, you'll get a warning saying that all the data on this disk will be erased if you're happy, click OK. If you want to quit, click cancel. So we're going to click OK. Then we should have the information saying that the format is complete and the drive is now ready. So that is the drive part of it done. So we can close this down. The next thing to do is to actually obtain the correct BIOS. I've actually got the website up already. So this is the ASRock website. And just for clarification, there's our board. You can get a visual to make sure it looks like your board and make sure that the correct model number is here. So B650M Pro RS. If you've got the Wi-Fi version, it will say Wi-Fi. Just make sure you get the right board, like I said earlier. Again, if you're not sure, head over to our Discord and we'll point you in the right direction. So at this point, we can go over to the support tab, which is down here at the bottom. We can scroll down a little bit more and we've got various options. So if you want to find out which CPUs are supported, you can head over to the CPU support list and it'll tell you which BOSS version you actually need for your particular processor. 
Now, as it stands at the moment, all of these are pretty much up to date and will work. There's the validated bosses there. So if you've got the X3D, 7950X, then it's been bootable since 1.18, but it's been validated at 1.21. So that'll give you an idea of which ones you need. Realistically, for this particular purpose, because all of the CPUs are pretty much supported out of the box, all we want is just a newer boss. So we're gonna go to BIOS, and there's some information here. With this, if you're wondering if you're on an older boss, now we're on boss version 1.21, which is right down here, which was from what May 2023. It's now December 2023. So we've got one which is much newer here. Now, a lot of people say, can I just jump ahead or do I have to flash every individual BIOS? Well, you can go to the very latest one. If for any reason your particular motherboard doesn't support it, ASRock are pretty good with that and they'll mention it actually here in the description saying to update this particular version first before you carry on. But that isn't the case in this issue. So we can just go ahead now and download the file. So if you're outside of China, click on the global link. If you're in China, click on the China link. So we're gonna click on the global link here and it'll give you an option to save the file. I'm gonna save it to the desktop. Click on save. The file is now done so we can close this window down. We don't need that anymore. With this file, it needs to be extracted or unzipped. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna choose extract all. We're going to extract it to the default location where it wants to go. Click on extract. And now we're going to get a new folder, which should automatically open up anyway. If not, just double click it to open it. So here we have a ROM file. Now, if you actually have the system up and running and it's working, you can just put this ROM file onto a USB stick and flash it from actually within the BIOS. But if you want to do a USB BIOS flashback, you need to rename this file. So the BIOS flashback system can actually recognize what it is and take the appropriate measures to kickstart the reutility. If for some reason you can't see the .rom extension on here, you may need to go into view, go down to show, and you want file name extensions. So if we get rid of that, sometimes it'll get rid of it again. Depends on what file it is and if it's registered or if it's been known before. So anyway, we've got our file name extension. So we need to rename this, and it needs to be renamed to creative.rom. So creative dot rom you can leave the original rom if you want to it doesn't really make a difference if it's uppercase or lowercase the choice is yours so because it is still the same name we've not actually changed the file extension so we don't get a warning saying that there is a problem there so all we need to do now is to copy and paste or cut and paste this file and put it onto our usb stick so i'm going to right click i'm going to choose cut go down to our usb drive which we formatted earlier i'm going to right click and choose our paste command and so there we have our creative.rom file. And we know it's the right size. This is 32 megabytes or 32,768 kilobytes. That is absolutely fine. So what we can do now is take that drive out of the machine and we can go over to our little test bench and now we can flash the BIOS. Okay, so now we're ready to install the new BIOS onto our motherboard. So I'm gonna grab our USB stick. Now it's not actually very clearly labeled on the back of the board which port you actually need to use, but it is quite important that you do use the right one. And you'll see if you look very closely, this one has actually like a grayed out section around, like a rectangle. So that is the USB flashback port, this one down here. So we're gonna put the drive into there. So that is ready to go. The BIOS flashback button is over on this far side here. There's also an LED next to it as well, so you can see the activity, but that's ready. So the next thing to do is to plug in our power. So it only needs a single 24 pin power connector from your power supply. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that into the 24 pin socket, which is just here on the motherboard. When you connect up the power supply, make sure it's in the off position. So when you're ready, you can then turn the power supply back on and you'll get some LEDs on the back of the board to say that there is power going to it. So you can see that quite clearly. So now we're ready to flash the boss. So what I generally tend to do is just press and hold the button for about three seconds or until the light starts flashing. So the button is down here. So we're gonna do one, two, three and release. And you can see now there's an activity LED which is flashing away there. So what it's gonna try and do first of all, is gonna first, it's gonna try and initialize the motherboard. It's then gonna try and initialize the BOSS flashback system. Once it's done that, it will then try and read the USB drive. Then it will transfer the USB drive data onto the system. And then when it's done, it should shut the system down. At least that is a theory. So we'll see what happens. This whole process shouldn't take more than about five or six minutes. 
Keep an eye on the LED. You should notice it changed speed. I'm not entirely sure whether it will on this particular board, but we'll find out very shortly. But yeah, just uh, let it do its thing. Don't touch anything. And uh, yeah, we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so our boss has finished flashing and it took somewhere in the region of about four and a half to five minutes. And the USB or the LED flashes quite slowly to begin with. Then you get a faster flash and then all of a sudden you'll find the LED will go out. Now in this instance, because we don't have a system here, nothing really turned off. We've still got the RGB lighting around the back of the board, but most importantly, the USB flashback BIOS button LED has now extinguished itself. So that means everything is okay. So at this point now, you can turn the system off. So we're gonna turn it off at the power and then we can remove our USB stick. And at this point now, if you want to, you can go ahead and maybe assemble the rest of your system or maybe just put the processor on, some RAM, graphics card, whatever, and just see if the system will actually post before you build it into your system. Obviously, if you've already built it into your system, it's all done and dusted, then yeah, you can probably just turn it on and carry on as you would normally. Eventually the LEDs will go out. Unfortunately, the power supply I'm using has uh, quite a big capacity, so it takes a while for it to discharge it totally. But anyway, that is it done. So yeah, you can disconnect it, do whatever you want to next. If for any reason you get any problems whilst you're doing this task, then please feel free to reach out to us. The Discord links will be in the video description, or you can leave a comment in the comment section. And also while you're thinking about it, if you found this video useful and you've maybe learned something, then possibly hit the like button. That'd be much appreciated. And also, if you want to see more content on like this on a daily basis, you can hit the subscribe button and the chime notification, and that way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully, we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.